Hi everybody. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys very briefly about making art with data. Um, I, uh, I write code to manipulate and bend data into all kinds of shapes and forms, lots of different styles. You'll see just some brief examples. Um, and this is, I think, fairly similar to what other artists do with paint or clay. There's a, a real analogy there. The, the difference with working with data, um, data, no matter what you do to it, no matter how you bend it and twist it, it still sort of speaks. There's like this data essence that kind of comes through. And as an artist, you end up doing this dance with this material you're working with. It's an interesting process. Data always has a story to tell. It's, it's very hard to silence it. Um, I'm going to show you some work here. This is a large photographic print. Uh, it's composed of uh, over 350,000 tiny little squares. Let me see those here. It's called the top grossing film of all time, one by one. And it's actually every single frame of the film Titanic. <laughs> Simplified in this pure color. So I've taken out all of the sort of recognizable content. Um, it's arranged from the upper left is the beginning of the film, and the lower right is the end of the film, like the uh, on a page of a book. Um, so even though there's none of this content, if you look at it, there's no overt content, you can still see like the rhythms of narrative. So up here, this is Leo out on the bow of the Titanic. I'm king of the world, right? Or like, uh, this is the ship going down. So even though this stuff is, is obliterated, in one sense, and you have a different art object, the data still sort of is, is communicating uh, some of its essence, and I'm really interested in that sort of, uh, I call that a dance, that relationship between the process of making these things and the content, the original content, and then this final thing. So you have, you know, this final thing is a print that, that hopefully has an aesthetic quality of its own, and yet it still sort of has this train, sort of trail to uh, the source material. <coughs> these are four uh, large photographic prints. Um, each one is about human scale. Um, source material is very different. Uh, um, this is every, every Playboy centerfold from the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s, and the 1990s. So I've taken 120 images, 10 years worth of centerfolds, and sort of mathematically compressed them into an image. Uh, and so you have this sort of not safe for work content, and then you have the these images that sort of uh, these sort of ghostly remainders that come out of it. Uh, the other thing I think that's interesting that's left is there's this evolution of the, the way these portraits, if you want to call them that, have been taken. So uh, on the, in the 60s, this up here is, is hair. Uh, in aggregate, sort of in, on average, the figure sort of turned away from the camera. And over time, as you go through the 70s, the 80s, and then the most uh, crucially, or most obviously in the 80s and 90s, uh, the figure's now facing the camera and is lit in all of the important places. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, you know, even though these things exist as, as art objects, hopefully in their own right, this communication of the evolution of what's happened to this type of photography over 40 years is uh, an interesting sort of other layer to the project. And this is a, uh, a piece that uses some of the same ideas and same sort of, sort of uh, structural content. Like, uh, it's another average of work. Um, it's called, the, the group of them is called 100 Special Moments. And uh, they are randomly selected um, sort of commemorative photographs of uh, the newlyweds, of uh, Kid with Santa, of uh, the Little Leaguer, and the Graduate. And these were selected, actually not by me, I gave someone else the assignment to pick out 100 photographs, you know, uh, the bride on the left, pick out 100, photo 100 photographs, the little leaguer on one knee, and then these are sort of compressed into one special moment. And that's an interesting sort of uh, tension, I think, between the uniqueness that we all feel naturally in these moments and the aggregation of these moments in, in the culture. Um, I'm going to get under the hood, I've never actually done this in a talk before, but I'm going to get under the hood and show you a little bit about how a piece like this was made. Okay, so this is the first photo um, for each of the set, and uh, they're just sort of snapshots, and I took the high quality, they're just sort of, like I said, I actually assigned someone else because I wanted that distance. 
assign someone else the, the, uh, uh, the role of selecting. Um, let, me go, let me put five of them together. So this is five. You can kind of see them. They're five images, just mathematically sort of smushed. Um, and you can see them, like, you know, you can still see the individual character of each one. If we go to, like, 25. So by the time you're at 25 images, you are already almost to the final, which is amazing to me. And it was a really interesting, you know, sort of, uh, kind of blew my mind to think that, you know, 20, just 25 images sort of generates this thing. And it didn't matter which 25 I chose, it would always sort of head toward this space. And then we'll go to the, sort of all the way to the end. It sort of flows, but you sort of hone in on this sort of ideal, and then you don't leave it, which is really wild uh, to me. Um, so changing gears, you know, I, use, I do use a lot of material from popular culture and from day-to-day -day life. Uh, but I'm also really interested in like what some people consider really dry, like uh, 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 raw data, the kind of thing that's in a database or a spreadsheet. Um, this wall was recently installed in the lobby of the new U.S. Census Bureau headquarters. It's a 40-foot sort of data mural, I think of it. Um, weighs 12 tons, sort of cantilevered out in space a little bit, uh, and it represents uh, the, the U.S. population from 1790 to present, county by county. Um, but I don't provide a key, and I'm not interested in this particular piece in, in sort of making what is essentially a graph, but a graph where I've focused all my energy on, on while being truthful to the material and the data, seeing if I could find an aesthetic quality that I, I uh, that represented the, this population sort of in, in abstraction. And this is a, sort of a detail of it. Each one of these little curves, I call them schemes, is actually uh, a curve that describes the growth of a county. Uh, uh, so the, I say this sort of to preface the last piece I want to talk about. Um, this is an older work that also uses uh, statistical data. It's actually census provided statistical data. It's actually, in my mind, a, it, it, it could be considered a failure in a sense. Um, this uses uh, shoe production data from the United States from the 60s to present. So. How many shoes are made in the U.S. in, in uh, women's heels and men's work and children's play? Or, like 31 different categories of shoes are tracked um, month by month over the years. Like how many shoes we make, how many shoes we make. And my idea was, can I take what's like a, a banal, dumb data set? You know, in my mind, I was, this was the plan. I want to take a, a banal, dry data set and sort of infuse it as a special effect, it's like a, a psychedelic. Um, make it, make something dry into like eye candy, right? And these are different views of the same sort of data graph. And again, I'm less interested, my, my interest wasn't driven by showing content, data content, my interest was, can I take something that's sort of dry, tabulated data, and make it this sort of optical effect? Now, two things about this. Um, it's been mentioned to me many times that uh, shoes are not banal or boring or anything like that. So, point taken, I've got the memo. Shoes are, are important, and I understand. Um, the other thing, if you see the shape of this thing, it's sort of a, here I've got a clip that sort of demonstrates it more. The shape of this thing is sort of a volcano, mountainy sort of shape. Um, it's got a wide base and comes to a narrow top. The wide base is actually, there's sort of a timeline that runs up the spine of the thing. This, you can think of this as like a timeline. Down here is the 60s, and up here is present. And it's wide at the bottom because we made lots of shoes in the U.S. in the 60s. And it's narrow almost to nothing at the top because now we don't make shoes in the U.S. So this data has just <coughs> fallen off the cliff. Um, I wasn't interested in that, that idea from the outset. That wasn't what I was thinking about. And yet this piece becomes like a really clear, vibrant demonstration of a, a very important sort of political and economic and social issue, which is the outsourcing of our manufacturing base, right? So I wanted to do one thing, and I think I did in some sense, but the data still spoke, you know, no matter, it spoke through my process, and uh, it was very hard to silence. So I thank you very much. <laughs>